Welcome back to another video about Red Games Tycoon 2. This is Dream Big Studio and I'm your game designer I simulate. If this is your first time watching my channel, I explore different simulation games and share gameplay videos of those I like. Subscribe to my channel if you are also a simulation game lover. I started Dream Heart Studio on hard difficulty. According to the game, level of difficulty mainly affects sales figures of our games. I was thinking, what sources of income I could still depend on before the studio established a firm footing on game making. The two things I thought of were commissioned work and game engines. Next, I select all the perks that would allow my character to stay in front of the work desk as long as possible. I picked Inexhaustible, Medical Miracle and Iron so my character doesn't take breaks, get sick or go to the toilet. At the beginning, things were simple because the studio's only employee, the CEO, didn't need the toilet or the lounge. It was sufficient with two small offices, one for development and one for research. Short assignments were a steady source of income because as long as I had the manpower to deliver on time, I got paid. Once I received some cash, I could afford to do some research. The first thing I unlocked was the gameplay feature controller support. This was mandatory for a lot of development kits. Contract games were a bit tricky. To get the bonus payment, the game needed to hit a minimum rating. With the difficulty raised, more gameplay features had to be included to achieve this. That increased the game's development cost. A lot of times I barely made or didn't make any profit. But, after the studio's reputation reached a certain point, I started getting contract games with lucrative bonus payments for a relatively low minimum rating. For a while, the studio enjoyed making money and gaining experience at the same time through these contract games. We talk about engines two episodes back. From very early on, DreamHeart Studio developed and sold its own engines. Whenever the financial situation allowed, I gave priority to unlocking new engine features. Engine fees the studio got was a great help to its cash flow. One time, after making several expansions, the studio's balance was really low. I was very lucky that engine fee from developer TLO came at this most needed moment and saved Dreamheart Studio from plunging into red. Eventually, the studio reached a point where it had one development team continuously doing short assignments to maintain income. With positive cash flow secured, I could set up a second development team, Quality Assurance Sound and Graphics Studios. In 1996, the studio released its first game with a rating that was okay. Once through this point, game revenues became the studio's main income which was way more profitable than commission work and engine fees. It was no longer necessary for DreamHeart Studio to do commission work. Instead, it focused on making better and better games. Things continued to improve afterwards. I'm not sure if the level of difficulty also impacts game console sales, but what I can share with you is that DreamHeart Studio's first console was quite basic, to say it in a good way. In 2001, it was still of technology level 1 and it didn't have any console feature. The review was terrible, yet after staying in the market for 23 weeks, it broke even. I took it off the market after more than 250 weeks. Overall, this very basic console still managed to make quite some profit for the studio. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video as well as the game. You may remember, my studio has not received Publisher of the Year award yet. That's the goal for our next episode. Stay tuned and enjoy Mad Games Tycoon 2. See you next time. Take care.